Uh, okay. So we're going to take notes on piecewise functions. So piecewise functions. And I broke this up over three days. Um, so I'm going to give you guys an assignment today. And we'll be revisiting that between today, tomorrow, and kind of sort of on Friday. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have our first quiz. So on that quiz, you'll have something very similar to the warm-up, uh, where you'll be given a function. You need to tell what its parent function is, how it's been transformed, what its end behaviors are, what its domain and range is, what its interval of increasing and decreasing is. Uh, and then I'll probably throw in a couple like review solve for x things. Okay. Are we allowed to use our basic functions? Absolutely you are. In my class, I am very much pro using notes. So if you took notes, like if you put in the effort to take your notes, I think you should be able to use them. And like, I don't know, my philosophy on that, like if you go to a construction job, like your boss isn't going to tell you that he wants you to build something, but don't you dare use that either. Or you put that tape measure away because this is a test. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. Anyway. <laughs> you put that tape measure away. I don't want to see it. Anyway, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I see your notes and I see the handouts I give you and your assignments even. Like, if you want to use old assignments, a lot of times I'll base quizzes on questions I've given on assignments. If you want to use old assignments, that's fine too. I see all of those as tools and there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to use the tools that you have at your disposal. Okay. So piecewise functions, um, what these look like. Uh, these are functions that are made up of other functions. Uh, and I'll show you an example of one. We'll say we've got some function f of x. And then I'm going to use a brace to encapsulate three other functions. So f of x is going to be made up in this case of 2x plus 5. It's also going to be made up of x squared minus 8. It is also going to be made up of 3x minus 15. Now, these three functions aren't going to be part of the whole function at the exact same time. They have intervals upon which you use each of those functions differently. So, for example, I'm going to say that this function is 2x plus 5 only when x is less than negative 3. So not only are piecewise functions made up of different functions put together, but those functions have limits on when they're used. I'm going to say that x squared minus 8 is what the function is only if uh, x is between, so I'll say x is greater than or equal to negative 3, and also less than 2. And I'll say that it's this other one when x is greater than or equal to 2. So I have all these different limits that are placed on these different functions. Now this looks a little intimidating when you first see it because you've got not only do you have three different equations that you have to deal with that are mixed together, but you also have to deal with uh, those inequalities for what x could be. But it's really not that bad if you take it one step at a time. So. For example, if I ask you to evaluate the function at f of 0. So f of 0, which of those intervals does that fall in? Is it less than negative 3? Is it between negative 3 and 2? Or is it greater than 2? Between negative, <laughs> between negative 3 and 2, right? So since, f of, since 0 is in between these two numbers, I'm only going to use the middle function. I don't care about the top or the bottom. And so to evaluate f of 0, then, I would just plug 0 in for x in the middle function. So 0 squared minus 8. So f of 0 is negative 8. What is the purpose of this kind of function? So piecewise functions are used when you have a situation that changes. Um, the most common use that anybody in their day-to-day -day life would have with a piecewise function is if you work at a job, you make uh, $10 an hour for the first 40 hours per week, and you earn time and a half after that. That's two different functions. One is uh, $40, or one is X number, like $10 per hour, so 10X, for X less than or equal to 40. And then it's uh, 1.5 times 10X for X greater than 40. 
and then that's a piecewise function because you're like how much you're earning is based on how much you're working. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, the electricity company uses a piecewise function when it does an electric bill, but the piecewise function that the electricity company does, like I tried to make an assignment for you guys based on understanding the function that they use to like tell you how much you owe for your electricity bill. It's nutso. Like it's there's like, well, it's not, it's not just that. There's like seven different layers. Like it's crazy and nobody cares because nobody understands what the electric what the electric company is doing anyway so it's like sure fine i'll pay that that sounds good that sounds fair. reasonable uh okay did you check your math on <laughs> yeah well and like the the like they're pretty open about it they're like okay this is the function we use and like it's like a seven layer piecewise function it's crazy anyway okay so back to this uh how about if I wanted to find out the value of f of negative 10? Anybody want to give a try as to which of those three functions you'd use for f of negative 10? The first one. 2x plus 5. First one, 2x plus 5. So you're going to do 2 times negative 10. And then you're going to add 5 to it. So negative 20 plus 5, negative 15. Kind of, sort of? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the only place that you could have an issue is making sure you understand the way that those uh, intervals work. So if I wanted you to evaluate, say, f of 2, two of these intervals have 2 in them. Right. So that's why I have them set up the way that I do. Like, this is x less than 2. This is x greater than or equal to 2. So x equal to 2 is only going to be the third function, which would be 3 times 2 minus 15, so 6 minus 15, which is negative 9. Okay. I thought somebody said 5. I was like, five. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's evaluating a piecewise function. Now, as far as today goes, I want to talk a little bit about graphing them. We'll get more into graphing them tomorrow, but when you're graphing a piecewise function, for now, I essentially just want you to use a table and then graph those tables. If you want to use your calculator to make your life easier, you can. And how you can do that is your calculator will graph up to like eight or nine different y's at the same time. So I'm going to go to my calculator here. I'm going to do uh, 2x plus 5 for my first function. I'm going to do x squared minus 8 for my second function. I'm going to do 3x minus 15 for my third function. And like, I'm not going to do anything on this calculator that you couldn't just do by hand. So like, if you want to do it by hand, more power to you. It's really not that much more difficult. OK, now if I graph these, it's going to look, I don't know, like a graph horror show. Like there's graphs everywhere. But this, like, in order to come up with exactly what this piecewise function would look like as a graph, what I want to do instead of looking at the way the calculator is graphing those three functions is I want to go to the table function. And here I have x, I have y1, y2, and if I arrow to the right, I can see y3 as well. So if I'm graphing this, take a piece of graph paper, draw in my x, y axis, and Sorry? Okay, gross. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. So for x less than negative 3, it's this function. So uh, I'm going to look at negative 4. So because negative 4 is less than negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Or 2, 3. Awesome. Okay. All right. So anyway, I'm graphing this. And the way that I'm graphing it is I'm going to focus on the interval for x less than negative 3. So I'm going to go all the way over. I'm going to look at negative 4 and negative 5. And I'm going to graph those two points. Now, if it were to continue to negative 3, it would be right there. Because if I look, negative 3, first function is negative 1. But here's how that uh, less than but not less than or equal to works. Like, it's going to be this function up to that point 
but at x equal to negative 3, I'm going to end it with an open circle, meaning it is not that value. Okay, bear with me one more second here. I promise this is going to make more sense. Okay, now if I look at the negative 3 value for my second function, negative 3 is 1 at my second function because the second function is going from All clear. Thank you. the second function is going from negative 3 to positive 2 alright so now I'm using the second function and not the first one so I did negative 3 now I'm doing negative 2 is negative 4 so negative 2 1 2 3 4 next would be negative 1 is negative 7 5 6 7 0 is negative 8, 1 is negative 7, and then 2 is negative 4. So I've got this kind of parabola here. Okay, now do you understand how I'm getting the parabola points from this table? Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody not please speak now? Or talk to me afterwards and I can go over it, that's fine. Okay, so I've got my second function filled in and that second function only goes up to 2 but it's not equal to 2. So instead of ending this function with a closed circle, I should end it with the same kind of circle I used at the end of the last one, which was an open circle. Okay, yes, no? So the circle on negative 3, whatever, mm -hmm. negative 3, 1, that would be a closed circle? Because that's, e that's where the function actually is there, yes. All right. And then the last one here, I'm going to use the y3. Uh, Okay, so y3 I've got, I'm going to start it at x equal to 2, which is negative 9, right there, and then from there it's going to rise 3, run 1, and there's the rest of the function. That looks funny. Uh, it does look funny. Okay, here's what we'll do. <laughs> The first part of today's assignment has you just finding the values like you were doing before, using the function. The second part, you will have to graph exactly three of them. And then you will have to identify graphs from others. I want you to try questions 1 through 12 first. Those shouldn't be too bad. When you get to question 13 and 14, I want you to uh, use a piece of graph paper for it. So if you have your own graph paper, that's great. If not, I have a bunch of it back there underneath the hand in for handback folders. Um, when you get to 13 and 14, if you need help, please ask, and I will go over it again. In fact, I might end up going over those on the board, but this is always like, I don't know, it's a weird thing to wrap your brain around if it's the first time you've seen it. So I want you to try 1 through 12 right now, please. Then when you get to 13 and 14, ask for help if you need it, and I will try my best to help you. Uh, if Oh, like everybody needs help, then we'll probably just go over at least one of them on the board. Kind of, sort of? Yes, no? Okay. Who knows? I don't know. You don't know. Uh, just a little bit about the way that one, two th or 1 through 12 is laid out is you've got the three different functions, f, g, and h of x. And then you've got the different, like, so, number one, you're using the f function. Number nine, you're using the h function. Okay. Give it a try. So, three is just the answer. There's no three or two is the answer for the first. So, like, number one, uh, f of two, two is greater than zero, so your answer is two. No math involved at all, aside from just understanding that two is greater than zero. For number one, yeah. For number two, it's got the f function again. So f of negative four, is negative four greater than zero or less than or equal to zero? So then your answer is three. Okay. Sweet. Uh, you guys can work together if you want to. You work alone if you prefer. Uh, I'll come around to help or I'll be around to help if you guys need it. Uh, Everything that was corrected yesterday from this class is in that folder back there too, if you want to see if you have corrections today.
Uh, oh yeah, graph paper too. Like it's that the stuff that's best to use. Like I mean, the nicer stuff is that red stuff right down there. It is, like it is a very math teacher thing to say, but that is my favorite graph paper ever. I love that graph paper. It's very much a math teacher thing to say. Thank you.